Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Conroy with the National Sports Media Association. Um, today, I'm talking to 2022 Rhode Island Sportscaster of the Year, Mr. Nick Coit. Nick, thank you for taking the time with us today. Yeah, happy to be with you, Ben. Uh, and I, I thank NSMA for this wonderful honor again, too. I got the call a couple weeks ago from Dave Gorin, and uh, it's uh, it's always a thrill. So I'm uh, very appreciative. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to just start uh, maybe back at the beginning. How did you get your start in sports media? Maybe what was your first job? Um, and how did your career path take you to where you are now at ABC6? Yeah, so I, um, I'm from Plymouth, Mass. originally, um, and I went to school in Boston. I went to Emerson College. So uh, I've stayed in New England uh, for you know my, my entire career. I've been lucky. I started small market in Bangor, Maine. Uh, before that, I started behind the scenes at Boston 25 uh, in Boston, uh, learned from some of the best in the business there, uh, made my way through. Uh, I was a, an intern there uh, the senior uh, spring semester for me at Emerson. Um, and like I said, learned learned there, produced there first, learned all the ins and outs, and then uh, went off to Bangor, Maine, worked at a wonderful station up there, WABI TV5. Uh, and then I've been at WLNE for the last nine years. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm starting to rack up the years, but yeah, I've been on air for, uh, 11 years, a little 11 years plus in the business. So, um, yeah, but I've, I've come across some of the best in the business and it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Absolutely. Very decorated career. Congratulations on that. Um, so you've spent a lot of time, obviously on the air in the world of sports media as a sportscaster. What are some of your favorite moments over the years? Maybe, uh, an impactful story that you got to cover or something like that. Yeah, I, I've um, I've been lucky enough through this journey to have a lot of them. Um, I've covered four Super Bowls now with the Patriots, the second wave of the dynasty. I got there just in time for that. Um, and obviously, those are some of the best weeks, some of the best nights uh, on the job, in the career, uh, covering the Pats, winning the Super Bowl three times. Um, you know, I grew up a Red Sox fan. And so being on the field in 2018 when they won the World Series was a was a thrill. Um, covered a Stanley Cup final, covered an NBA finals now. <laughs> Might be doing the same thing this spring if the Bruins and Celtics keep playing the way that they're playing, uh, knock on wood. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been it's been really cool. You know, those are all great moments, Ben, but I, I also, uh, I really, I think back fondly on some of the, the local sports teams that we've covered and some of the big moments with them. Um, this year, I was, I was, this past year, I was pretty proud of the, the work we did in covering the, uh, the Providence College men's basketball team, the Friars, uh, got to the Sweet 16, first time for the program in 25 years. And so the city was on fire. It was, uh, you know, the, the, the Friars are hot right now. They continue to be hot. Um, but it was a, it was a really thrilling story. Ed Cooley is a wonderful coach. If you ever have a chance to interview him, he is, you know, <laughs> one of the best sound bites in the business right now. Um, and, you know, covering that team and his story being from Providence, being the coach of Providence College, that was always, you know, it's been a great story to cover. But, you know, this past spring, it, it was really cool seeing just how much the, the program meant to the city and, you know, how much the city got behind them. And then another moment, too, I, I think back same school, Providence College back in 2015, won a national championship in, in men's hockey. And that was really, really thrilling. One of the best nights in the job. So, you know, those big moments, the Super Bowls, the, you know, where you're, you know, in the biggest of stages, but also um, those local moments, those local teams, I, I think back fondly. So I've, I could go on and on about some of the great moments, but it's been, uh, it's been wonderful. Absolutely. A lot of special moments there. Um, so I was wondering if you could give some advice to a young person, uh, maybe a college student who's looking to establish themselves in the field of sports media, maybe get that first job out of college. What advice would you give them? Uh, I'd say, first of all, try everything. Um, and it's, you know, one of the things I, I tell my student, ironically, we're talking on the uh, first day of uh, my sports broadcasting class at URI today. So I get a new crop of kids, which will be great. And one of the first things I tell them is um, try everything. Um, you may find something. And I mean, you know, in our class, we, we do sports radio, we do podcasting, we do TV reporting, we do TV anchoring you know, producing, writing, all that stuff, using a camera, learning all those things. And you may pick up on something that you didn't think you really had a passion for or may surprise you some sort. And so I say, try everything, you know, and you you may go down a, a career path you didn't think possible. Um, and the other thing is be persistent, um, you know, ask the right questions of people. And, and that kind of goes along with the whole networking thing. You know, people always say it's about who you know, and it's it, it's really true. 
And don't be afraid to reach out to somebody in the business and make a connection that way and sort of open a door for you here, open a door for you there, because you'll find that people in the business are very, very willing to help other people that are trying to get into the business. Um, that's one of the best things I think of, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to come down to the NSMA uh, weekend uh, three times. And one of the best things is just talking to the people there um, and networking because, you know, you make a new friend from this state or that state or working for this medium or that medium. And uh, it, it's, it's really wonderful because you just see how great, you know, the people in the business are and how willing they are to, to pay it forward and to push the business forward because they care so much about it. So um, make those connections. That's one of the best things you can do if you're a young person trying to get into it. Absolutely. A lot of friendly faces over here at the NSMA. So, um, so my next question was, uh, you touched on it about this award. So what does it mean, you know, as, as someone who's dedicated so much time um, into the world of sports media, what does it mean to have your work recognized by, you know, an audience of your peers? Uh, it's it's the ultimate um, sign of respect and the ultimate honor. It, it really is um, to to earn that respect from your colleagues in the market, the people that you you see and, and work around every day. Um, that's that's really cool um, because, you know, you you work with people at your own station your own outlet but you know you're on the same stories as the people from the other tv stations the other sports writers in the market who i you know fully respect who i'm friendly with who i have such great relationships with um and so to, to earn their respect is is really flattering um and you know it, it's i always say it's a real great recognition of the work we're doing together at uh channel six and in, in providence as a team um, and I really mean that because I wouldn't be able to earn an honor like this if I didn't have the, you know, the opportunity from the station, the, the platform um, to do what we do every day and to have, I, I say, Ian Steele, who is the 2020, uh, what am I, 2022, so 2021 <laughs> NSMA Rhode Island Sportscaster of the Year. Um, you know, Ian is the best partner in the business. Um, I can't say enough good things about, you know, Ian as you know, as a work colleague, as a business partner, as a friend, as, as a worker. I mean, he's, he's got a relentless work ethic. Can't say enough good things about him and how much he makes my life easier. <laughs> uh, at this point, we've been working together for five plus years. So sometimes we finish each other's sentences. Um, and so it makes coming to work really enjoyable every day. Um, and he does such great work that, you know, again, as a team, um, it, it really, it, it allows us to have an honor like this come our way. And so I, I can't say enough good things about him, but yeah, it's, it's wonderful to get that call from Dave Gorn when you do. Um, it's a wonderful pat on the back um, because we do put so much into it. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so it's a new year. It's 2023. I was wondering what are some of the stories or, you know, you mentioned the Celtics, how well they're playing. What are some of the things you're looking forward to covering the most this year? Well, ironically, we're talking on a Tuesday where I woke up and my phone was buzzing because uh, Bill O'Brien was named the offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots. Thank goodness, um, because they needed the change there. So that's something that we're going to be following closely is how the Patriots bounce back. New England is, you know, about 20 years ago when I was a kid, New England was a, a Red Sox fever baseball region. Now, people, it's a, it's a Patriots region um, and it's changed so much. And so when things like this happen, when they don't have a great year, uh, when they struggle like they did, these sorts of stories are going to come up. So that's one thing we're going to be following at least today and then going forward. Um, but yeah, with with the Celtics and Bruins, they've both been outstanding so far this year. So we're expecting a very busy April, May, June. Um, and we've got a lot of uh, local sports that we'll be covering. Um, the Friars are ranked again in the top 25. Um, so we're expecting, a, you know, an NCAA tournament uh, appearance again this year, uh, if all goes well here. Um, we've got, you know, great local basketball programs between Bryant University and Brown University. And, um, you know, even something like, you know, we, we cover a program that's rebuilding and seeing where it goes. That's always a great thing uh, it is, you know, seeing where you know, sort of the groundwork and, and, you know, the program at URI is rebuilding. Archie Miller was hired this year as the coach and a uh, big name in college basketball. And he's sort of in year one of the rebuild. And so to see where that goes, um, you know, I think is exciting the next couple of years, but we're at, 
we're at ground level right now. And so, you know, but that's all part of following the story. And when it reaches its peak, it's, it's really cool. So um, yeah, there's a lot of different things going on. The, the women's team at URI right now, top of the Atlantic 10, that's going to be a great story this spring too. So uh, there's always something, especially in new England and in the, in the Providence market, we are never short on stories. It is always busy. I always say like the summertime might be a little bit slow, but it doesn't really ever slow down because then training camp starts with the Patriots and it's like a, it's like a new year. So a lot to look forward to though, for sure. Absolutely. I got, I got to say though, I am a Cavs fan, so I might have to root against your Celtics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they've been great. They've been really, Donovan Mitchell is a great story in himself. So yeah, it's been pretty cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Nick, congratulations again. Um, thank you for taking the time and uh, have a good one. Ben, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely.